a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton as we fan out to clean up our city. The first 50 KBLA listeners to hit our website at KBLA1580.com will receive a free KBLA tea when you join us on Saturday morning, April 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton. Now, no show, no shirt, but sign up at KBLA1580.com right now to help us clean up Compton as part of Earth Day 2024. We will see you on Saturday, April the 20th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in the city of Compton to do our part for Earth Day 2024. We are KBLA Talk 1580, caring about the climate, caring about the community, cleaning up Compton. First things first. First, it's the DU General, Money B. I'ma put you up on the schedule. Six to nine, eight weekdays, not two and seven. Let's go. We got a lot to talk about, so much to pedal through. Unapologetically progressive. Tune to KBLA 1580 to get the mess. With your ancestors' favorite radio station. First, black on talk radio, left side of the nation. Me and Dominique the Prima go way back. Smiley making sure the station stays black. Discussing all the issues in our community. We'll host the black and brown and others find unity. So let's talk about it. Maybe we can improve it. Digital underground, always down with the moon. So we tune in. The first things first with the queen of black talk radio. Dominique to Prima. Go, sis. KBLA Talk 1580. Good morning and God bless. I'm Dominique DePrima. This show, First Things First, my first thing, giving thanks, giving praises, and asking for blessings from God. Asking for the blessings of the ancestors and the elders, and let's go, let's go, let's go. We got a lot to do, a lot to talk about, and let's connect. Uh, You're invited in every single minute of the hour at 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. If you want to call the old-fashioned way, the telephone or I guess it's this now. Uh, If you're on YouTube, you can see my gestures. We're at youtube.com, KBLA 1580. And of course, you can send messages that way. I also check in with my social media here and there uh, throughout the show. It's KBLA 1580 on every platform. My personal is Deprima Radio, D-I-P-R-I-M-A, and then radio. Please, uh, yeah, like, follow, subscribe, or you know, give a nice disgruntled comment. Give give me some eclipse energy, some of that uh, a dark side of the sun energy. <laughs> I do love the dialogue, the fellowship, and the conversation. And you are always, always invited in. On this Wealth Building Wednesday, Hour 1, we typically look at what's going on on the West Coast, the left coast, the Pacific Ocean side of town. Hour 2, we go national, international, and beyond, and we'll also shine shine the spotlight on a black-owned or BIPOC-owned socially innovative business. Hour three, we do a deep dive with a person or persons of interest. Sahara Ali will be joining us today. And folks, uh, if you are interested in an astrological or numerological reading, uh, yeah, call hour three. She'll be in the studio. We'll talk about uh, some things going on in the world. And we'll also take a look a brief look, a mini snapshot of what's going on in yo life. So that should be, that should be a lot of fun. It always is. Uh, big, big news on Tavis Smiley's show today. We'll find out. Will be unveiled for the nation who uh, Professor Cornell West is choosing as his running mate. Uh, we <laughs> we don't know Trumps yet. We do know the fake Kennedy, uh, but we. Do not know uh, Dr. West, and of course he's a friend of this radio station and many of us on it. So looking forward to that reveal, the uh, big reveal on the Tavis Smiley show today. That show follows mine directly on KBLA Talk 1580. And of course, uh, keeping abreast or doing our best to keep you abreast of what is going on um, in the... In the local space here, the left coast, California, and places connected to it, um, we are welcoming in 
a couple of guests this morning um, via phone. Um, the executive director of the Youth Justice Coalition, co-executive director, Justin Marks. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Also, um, Jazara Halliday, who is an organizer with uh, YJC and also a garden teacher. Welcome. Good morning. I know it's early for you if you're under like 100. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> Unless you've been doing front page for years and getting up at 3 in the morning, this is early. But I appreciate you guys checking in. I'm going to start with you, um, Justin. Just explain what Youth Justice Coalition is, what y'all do. Well, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Prima, for having me. Call uh, me Dominique. That's with, fine. But I appreciate the uh, love. But you could call me Dominique. <laughs> Dominique, appreciate you for having us on. Uh, Youth Justice Coalition uh, was established in 2003. It was uh, founded by previously incarcerated students, um, our members, and their families, and um, our um and so you're right. Anybody under 100, this is early, and I, I fall into that category. So forgive me for any pauses I might have. No worries. We're um, used to it. <laughs> so, but the, the, the Youth Justice Coalition, you can follow us and find out a lot more on our Instagram page at Youth Justice LA. You can also uh, visit our website, youthjusticela.org. Um, and then you'll find our mission statement where we're working to build a youth and family and formerly and currently incarcerated people's movement to challenge America's addiction to incarceration, race, gender, and class discrimination in L.A. County uh, and the nation's juvenile and criminal injustice system. Our goal is to dismantle the policies and institutions that have ensured the massive lockup of people of color, widespread law enforcement, violence, and corruption, consistent violence, violation of youth and communities' constitutional and human rights, the construction of a vicious school-to-jail track, and the buildup of the world's largest network of jails and prisons. We use transformative justice and community intervention and peace building, free L.A. high school, know your rights, legal defense, and police and court monitoring to starve the beast, to promote safety in our schools, homes, and neighborhoods without relying on law enforcement and lockups preventing system contact and pulling people out of the system. We use direct action organizing, advocacy, political ag education, activist arts to agitate, expose. All right, Justin, I'm giving you a little bit of a pass because I don't let people read on my show. I just, unless your name is, you know, uh, I don't know. Cornell West? <laughs> uh, no, unless your name is like literally Anderson Cooper. Cornell West can't even read because most people just, you know, they're just... Reading uh, on the radio is not what they do for a living or on camera. But I understand you're trying to get the major points across, and it's real early here. Um, but um, we'll have, you know, we'll have we'll have plenty of time. We got an hour. We got time to unpack the various things that you guys do. Um, bottom line is reimagining how young people um, are, you know how they're situated in, in, uh, in our society, in our city, county, state, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. I, I, I first came to the YJC uh, in 2010 when I was arrested. Um, I was a, a student at California State University, Northridge, uh, and there were protests there uh, against uh, the rising cost of education. Um, the CSUN police then outnumbered how many ethnic studies or black studies professors that we had. Um, and they were, uh, they got, they were scared. They called in Channel Islands police, the sheriff, CHP and LAPD um, to brutalize five students uh, and a professor. And um, we would later be called a CSUN six, but it was our ethnic studies professors that said, you need to go to Chuco's Justice Center where YJC is. And they put me in contact with other organizers who were fighting cases from the city attorney at that time. And it was YJC that introduced me into this idea of participatory defense and organizing to be able to fight back. And two years later, we ended up beating that case. Um, and so that was my, my first interaction. But I didn't join the organization of staff until 2018. Uh, but that's my orientation to YJC. And so that's what it'll always be to me. Wow, that's um yeah, thank you for sharing that story because it 
you know, it's not like it's your story. It's not just a job or, okay, I'm part of this organization. It's part of your life and how it unfolded. And I guess um, I'll ask the same question, even though, you know, you're not an executive director or anything like that, um, but you are an organizer. So, Jazara um, Holiday, if you don't mind sharing, like, what what it is about Youth Justice Coalition that moves you um, and that has kept you, you know, fired up. Good morning, yes. Um, so I came to Youth Justice Coalition at the age of 17, 16, 17 years old, um, and that's about the time that I caught my first two cases. Um, so I'm in the movement because it happened to me. Um, when I came to YJC, um, I was in the middle of going through court, not knowing, like, basically what was going to happen to me. Um, when I did come to YJC, I was actually not interested. Well, I would say I was uneducated, not uninterested. But I didn't know everything that they offer as far as the organizing and the political education around everything. Um, and I had a teacher, the actual garden teacher. His name was Mr. Velton. Um, and he started to encourage me to get into that kind of stuff. He knew my situation. Um, and I was also very lost and depressed at that time. I didn't have like no outlets or nothing like that. So I was very closed off to the whole space and just everything that they had to offer. But for some reason I was gravitated to that teacher. And that was kind of the person that like opened up my inner circle. Um, and then we, I had garden class, so I was doing the garden and then COVID came. Um, my teacher sadly um, got killed in 2021. That oh, was I'm also so my sorry. graduation year. No problem. Thank you. Wow. That COVID, your teacher gets year. killed and you're graduating under the pandemic. That's a lot. Yes, That's I a whole that. lot. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Yes. But still yes. you rise. So still That's amazing. Yes. Court. Wow. Yes. All while still going to court. Um, my mom, she is a citizen. My father isn't. So I was at risk of deportation as well. Um, yeah, I went through a lot in 2019 and 2020. I got off probation a month before my 18th birthday. Um, so yeah, YJC, literally the motto, everything that they're about is basically what they got me through. So I was just like, Literally, there's young people. I'm from the east side. I'm from South Central. All my friends, not to, like just honest, right? All my friends have been through this in some way, shape, or form. We got single parents. We got parents that's going through addiction. We grew up in survival mode. So I'm just trying to prevent what, what we like born into, basically. Yeah. Well, when I hear you um, describe that, I, I wonder, did you ever think like in 2018, that you would be a gardening teacher? Never, never. I never, That I say it all the time, I never miss to be seeing so much in me that I've never seen for myself. I never even seen organizing for myself. I never had a green thumb before this. And what really pushed me to keep gardening going, when I tell you Mr. V was all of our, my whole class of 2020, 2021, and before that, that was our whole heart. When we found out our teacher died, we took a trip all the way to Modesto, a road trip. We drove up there to meet his family, everything. Like, that person really encouraged us, and he was really, like, he just really believed in me. So, no, I never seen none of this for myself, but I knew once I got it and once I was in it, especially gardening, as soon as everything happened, like I said, I graduated. I wasn't a student no more, whether it was volunteer or whatever it was going to be. The thing in my head, I just said, I don't want the garden to go away. That's amazing. Uh, continuing the conversation with uh, Justin Marks and Jazara Halliday of the Youth, Ju Youth Justice Coalition, uh, when we come forward, we'll find out what kind of actions they undertake, including uh, one that happened yesterday that made some waves and, and, and more of, you know, just what they are, the work that they're doing here um, in Los Angeles, uh, in California. You're welcome to join in, 809-20-1580. I'm Dominique DePrima for Unapologetically Progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. Psst. 
I have a secret. Uh-huh. I use secret whole body deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Oh. Uh-huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness. freshness. From my pits to my... Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California. Home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at advertising at KBLA1580.com. That's advertising at KBLA1580.com. KBLA1580, we've got you black. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm Reverend Gerald, the Life Coach. Is someone you love struggling with addiction and mental illness? Is improving your family's health important? Want to leave a legacy that your family can grow? Are you ready to enhance your perception of life experiences? Then wake up weekends at 7 a.m. with Urban Family Focus and get the wisdom, opportunity, resources, and motivation to live your best life. Join the conversation on Urban Family Focus Saturday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Unapologetically progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzy, Rizm Kism of Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. With Sky Rizzy, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzy is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzy. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzy, there's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. your doctor today about Sky Rizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. And visit SkyRizzy.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZY to learn more. Your ancestor's favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique DePrima right now. Right now. And, um... 800 is the number if you want to join the conversation. You are always invited in. We're talking with Justin Marks, uh, who is co-executive director of the Youth Justice Coalition and Jazara Holiday, Youth uh, Justice Coalition organizer and garden teacher. I need to take some classes with you, Jazara, because I do not have a green thumb at all. Um, I guess maybe there's hope. But you know, maybe, I mean, you didn't see, you inspired me when you said you didn't see yourself having a green thumb and now you do. Um, so let's talk about, you know, organizing, right? Um, for young people in LA County, it's, um, the, the, the way that young people are handled in the system when they get, when you all get in, uh, trouble is, really um, confusing, problematic, and um, we keep hearing that there's going to be these big changes or we must make big changes. Uh, The state is mandating it, um, and yet it doesn't seem like it's happening. So I'm going to put this um, to you, Justin Marks. Um, Explain how you see the situation. You know, you... uh, 
as someone who's been system involved yourself, like where we are right now um, with L.A. County uh, probation and how we deal with uh, juvenile justice in in uh, L.A. County? Yes. Thank you for that question, Dominique. Um, where we are now is that it um, that the county. Uh, well, let me back up. Um, where we've started is that L.A. County has been the largest jailer of our people, black and brown working class people. Um, they have the largest jail system in the world. Um, they have, uh, you know, for years, L.A. County spent more on stray dogs than they did on youth development, meaning that the L.A. County um, budget for animal control was um, was larger and they had no budget for youth development compared with cities like Atlanta, Baltimore, and New York City. Right now, LA County spends over $800,000 per year per incarcerated young person. And there are about 509 incarcerated youth, about 50 girls and gender expansive youth. Um, and so uh, on May 8th of last year, Brian Diaz was killed inside of one of these juvenile halls and camps um, with fentanyl poisoning that was brought in by probation officers, right? They, they, they've, um, you know, and it doesn't just happen in the juvenile system. We lift up the name of John Horton, who was killed inside of Men's Central, Jaw, uh, Men's Central Hall, um, but we know that there is this history of a lack of accountability for police and probation and those who are um, tasked with taking care of, um, uh, of of young people and those who are incarcerated inside. And so um, what YJC has uh, been doing for the last 15, 20 years is um, a campaign that we initially called the Dollar for Dollar campaign that would help us and help youth around L.A. County um, to establish um, a, for every dollar that's spent on incarcerating and suppression, uh, suppressing young people would be spent on youth development. And what we saw was a victory in 2022 where the county finally um, uh, erected a L.A. County Youth Development Department. But what we continue to see, even under this current mayor, is increased spending on law enforcement. Um, and we see um, continued lies by folks in charge, where even in the L.A. Times article yesterday that came out, it states that there's nowhere else for young people to go, when in fact we know that there's alternatives to incarceration, step-down facilities, and some youth centers like Chuco's Justice Center and the Youth Justice Coalition across L.A. County, but they refuse to acknowledge these as safe healing centers. Um, the county adopted okay, the Youth just, Justice but, Reimagined but, Report, I, right, I wanna, that has I, some of these alternatives spelled out. Yeah, I want to I wanna um, let you, you know, continue, but I just want to um, ask a question here, and I'm going to do that as we go along because I don't know how familiar folks are with everything that you're talking about. But when, you, when they say nowhere else to go, they're talking about residential prisons, I guess, or, you know, lockups. Um, it, is that something that YJC has the capacity to do? So we work with a network of partners. One of our partners is called the Los Angeles Youth Uprising Coalition. Um, another coordinating member of that is the Anti-Recidivism Coalition, which operates the Magnolia House, um, which does have previously incarcerated people um, come to them in a residential facility. Right now, YJC's budget is about $2 million dollars. But that's how much LAPD spends on printing each year. So with our budget, we're able to employ folks, help young people graduate, have a legal clinic, an organizing policy institute, and a substance use um, uh, disorder intervention program called Street Cred, where we train the community on how to use Narcan. I believe that they would prefer to spend their money more on incarcerating and keeping this system alive than on um, making sure that young people are fully developed and able to stabilize themselves in their communities. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you said, but it still doesn't, I, I don't know that you can say what they said is a lie because we're not right now. I guess the state makes a decision on Thursday whether or not these juvenile uh, uh, facilities, I, I don't even, I hesitate to call them facilities, um, are habitable or, you know, places where you could even in good conscience put a person so if thursday there no, there's nowhere they say no these places need to be shut down i mean 
nowhere is literally ready right now to accept th- it's three like 300 or more right young people mm-hmm. tomorrow that that doesn't exist does it well i mean uh, unfortunately this is not the first time that these halls and camps have been found true. unsuitable true. they've been they've been out of policy and and um, found unsuitable for over 200 days you know and so this idea that there's nowhere else to go we know that there's nowhere else to go is just false. There, there are a way to do step-down facilities. Not all those young people incarcerated are there for, um, you know, high-level offenses. Um, many of them haven't been convicted. Many of them, their families want them home. Audrina Rochelle is another parent who um, is also sits on the board of LACO that uh, is supposed to be responsible for the education of uh, young people who are incarcerated. And she's like, you know what I could do with the $800,000 that you keep my son to lock up? So young people can go back to their families and young people can go back to caring communities and organizations, uh, community partners and CBOs as an alternative to incarceration, to these youth prisons, right? Like Los Padrinos was shut down. Yep. They gave the county $118 million to open it back up and then still found uh, cases of abuse, still found probation bringing in um, drugs, probation still having sexual relations with incarcerated um, um, girls and boys, right? So it's, it's, it's sick. And we keep funding this abuse, saying that we have no alternatives, when really it's just a lack of willpower and priority. All right, we're right up against news, traffic, and sports, but we'll continue the conversation. I uh, want to talk about what you are doing about it, what you think we all should be doing about it, and how we should be thinking about it differently. Uh, we're talking with some folks from the Youth Justice Coalition, uh, Justin Marks and Jazara uh, Holiday, continuing the conversation, only on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Moore. Now here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The work continues 24-7 to clear debris from the collapse of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. U.S. Coast Guard Commander Roberto Concepcion says the priority is finding the bodies of the three remaining construction workers who have been missing since a container ship hit the bridge and brought it down two weeks ago. New York City Mayor Eric Adams is concerned about a series of random attacks on women. A number of women have come forward to report that they were sucker punched at random walking the streets of Manhattan in late March. One arrest has been made, but at least one suspect is still at large. The African-American mayor says the random acts of violence are traumatizing New Yorkers and they have to be stopped. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Can your roof handle extreme weather? If you have leaks or a 20-year-old roof, go to localroofs.com to schedule a free roof checkup. Localroofs.com proudly offers five-star service with flexible financing, including 0% interest for 18 months on approved credit. Go to localroofs.com. This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. There are several concerns for the Lakers after they lost by 14 at home last night to Golden State. The Lakers were reminded how weak their defense can be without Anthony Davis. Davis missed the game with an eye injury. Golden State made 26 three-pointers, the most allowed by a Lakers team in franchise history. Last night's loss also confirmed that the only way the Lakers can make the playoffs is through the play-in round. The Lakers are ninth in the Western Conference with two games left. At Memphis Friday, at New Orleans on Sunday. LeBron fought off flu symptoms to finish with 33 points and 11 assists. The Clippers won at Phoenix last night without Kawhi Leonard and James Harden. Leonard has a sore knee, Harden a sore foot. Russell Westbrook had a triple-double with 17 points, 15 assists, and 15 rebounds. The win clinched the Pacific Division title for the Clippers. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. It's the celebration of a living legend. It's the farewell tour. It's me featuring Frankie Beverly. Thank you for the love. Plus, after 7, it's a Mother's Day celebration, May 12th in the Kia Forum. In commemoration, coming your all white. 
Get tickets at Ticketmaster. Presented by the Black Promoters Collective. Yeah, y'all, come on. Come come come. Come. At KBLA Talk 1580, we fight the power every day. Yeah, Gotta give us what we want. Uh. Gotta give us what we need. Hey. I listen to KBLA, and I love the commercials. I know what the commercials mean. I also, if I'm looking and trying to figure something out, I need something to talk to me that might hit me. And it happens on TV, because, you know, every time they show a sporting event, they got the pharmaceutical companies back to back to back telling people how to fix the sickness on the same stuff that they sell them. So, we get it. Yep, we get it too, Chuck D. And that's why at KBLA Talk 1580... We don't black down. Drop it. Our freedom of speech is freedom of death. We, we got, got to fight the powers that be. Fight the power. Fight the power. Fight the power. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you. With professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. When you use bounce dryer sheets and your clothes look amazing, it's the sheet. Less static in your life? Yeah, it's the sheet. Smelling fresher than ever? It's the sheet. Oh, so soft fabric? Ooh la la. It's the sheet. Less wrinkles on your clothes, you know it's the sheet. Bounce dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness. Less static, less wrinkles. It's the sheet. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick. Sorry, kids. <laughs> yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. Fabrice. Fabric Talk. Hey, it's me, your couch. Today's my favorite day of the week. Fabrice Fabric Spray Day. The occasional deep cleans are nice, but in between, you know I'm needing a refresh. Ooh, here she comes with the Fabrice Fabric Spray. Oh, yeah. Spritz them armrests. Don't be shy. Nothing like a good spray down to get me smelling so fresh and clean. Don't forget my back. Nice. Fabrice Fabric Spray. It's just that easy. Now we can both. Breathe, breathe happy for breeze. La 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 la. Eggs are a staple in our diets, and there's only one egg with more delicious farm fresh taste plus superior nutrition. Eggland's best. With more vitamins, including six times more vitamin D and ten times more vitamin E, plus 25% less saturated fat than ordinary eggs. Available in so many delicious varieties. Classic, cage free, and organic. Eggland's best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. I spray and scrub, but the soap scum in my bathtub is still there. I spray and scrub, but the burnt sauce on my stovetop sticks around. Sprays can leave grime behind, but new Mr. Clean Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser combines the scrubbing power of an eraser with the cleaning power of Dawn to melt away tough messes on contact. Just wet, squeeze, and erase. Stop spraying, start erasing, and clean with more magic than ever with new Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. Thanks for waking up with Dominique DePrima on KBLA Talk 1580. Appreciate you. Um, we are talking with uh, Jazar Halliday and uh, Justin Marks, uh, Mr. Marks, co-executive director of the Youth Justice Coalition. And Ms. Halliday is uh, an organizer there as well as a garden teacher. Um, and we're talking about, actually, you mentioned... Um, the Justin, the the editorial yesterday in the LA Times, which implies that there's nowhere else for young people to go, and what you're saying is that um, we should be looking at it differently. Um, to be 
to be clear, what is it that you would like to see happen? I mean, and and this is actually a question for both, I guess, um, you know, both of you, just what would you like to see happen? What What is a successful juvenile justice um, system, rehabilitation um, system look like? Uh, you want to start, Justin? Sure, it's a great question. Um, currently, 45% of the young people who are in, car- in custody right now um, are on psychotropic medication, where they're pushing drugs onto youth. We also know that you know, for a long time, Men Central Jail is the largest provider of mental health in the county, right? And the with, with a, um, a, a different model looks like what's possible. Youth justice reimagined looks like is what if what if the county board of supervisors instead of last year after a young person died, instead of spending 118 million dollars to reopen Los Padrinos, they had invested that money into community-based organizations. Um, into the the network of housing, reentry services, education, life skills management that are across the county. Um, other places like Coalition for Responsible Community Development, uh, A New Way of Life with, some, with Susan Burton. There are active places that can, are ready to step up and do this work with investment. And so that's what we're um, that's what this looks like is investment in youth centers, investment in youth jobs to both invest in pre- prevention um, for, pre- um, for, fo- for young people who haven't been incarcerated, as well as uh, development for pre-adjudicated youth. Like Khalif Browder's brother was there. I don't know if you know the story of Khalif Browder. Of course, Browder, yeah. But he was, right, so he was falsely accused of stealing, um, a, of backpack. stealing a backpack. Yeah. Right, um, and, and died in custody um, only to be found out that it was a, a wrongful uh, um, uh, um, accusation uh, and charges um, that were brought up against them. And so we still have a lot of those types of youth in custody, in lockup, in youth jails and prisons in L.A. County. And right, so that haven't been that convicted. It is a different way. Okay, yeah. So, right, that haven't, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. okay. So, um, Desart, give me your, your take. Like, what do you, you know, you've also been system involved. <laughs> what What is your vision of ideally how it should or could be? Ideally, like I said, um, I would say, number one, they need to release everybody who is not um, convicted or sentenced for anything. If they're just sitting in there and inhumane, nobody should be sitting in there to begin with, right? But if you have not been convicted of any charges, received a sentencing or anything like that, they should not be sitting in there. Um, number two, education is a huge thing. Therapy and counseling, I cannot stress it enough. Um, I've been going through it since 2019 when I uh, first, you know, start going through everything. It is now 2024 and I'm still in therapy, still in counseling, still getting down to the root issues. That's one thing that the system lacks. They never get down to why are you here? How did you land here? What led you here? What is your background? What is your what? What do you go home to? The system don't care about that. Um, so that is another thing. Also, like Justin was saying, mental health is a very another big issue, right? And it shouldn't be addressed when they're in a facility, right? And nine times out of ten, those kids are going through what they're going through mentally because they are in that facility. Um, my brother is schizophrenic, and he was placed in a facility. Um, and not placed under ODR, which he should have been, and it did a number on him, did a number on his brain. Um, And so now he's going through basically the rehabilitation of being back on the outside as a person that has mental health needs. So a lot of things... ODR, the Office of Diversion and Reentry? Is that what ODR... Say that again? ODR, just explaining for people who don't... ODR is... ODR is strictly for mental health people. They're not supposed right. to go into general population. My brother was placed in general population, even though he's been a schizophrenic, has papers stating that he's schizophrenic and everything else. So ODR is, yes, the alternative, and it is for mental health people. Yes. Um, okay, we, we got some some folks I want to talk to you on the phone. You're welcome to call 800-920-1580. But of course, we have to address this, though, Justin. People, you know, people are, are going to be rightfully concerned that there are some young people in in the system that are, you know, potentially dangerous to themselves and others. 
people who are, you know, in for uh, murder and et cetera, et cetera, um, you, you're not going to send them to a new way of life. Like, how do you handle those folks? Well, I mean, um, yes, there there are folks who do, who do not need to be uh, in the general population. But um, just in the last year, there's been eight probation staff who were dismissed for forcing kids to have gladiator fights. Inside of I mean, look, so the, the like things the, I'm the, reading the, the, about the probation department mm-hmm. are horrifying. Yeah, having sex with kids, giving, bringing them drugs. And to be clear, I, I'm a mom of a teenager, and I know that teenagers are children, regardless of how, you know, folks want to say, try them as adults or this or that. Teenagers are children, period, full right. stop. I'm clear on that, but I think, you know, you... you, you what we read over and over and hear over and over in the L.A. County Board of Supervisors is that there are not enough probation officers. They're not showing up to work. They're understaffed, and that's why they're beating kids and doing different things, although uh, that stretches uh, credulity in my view. But, um, you know, how how do you see that? I mean, the way you're talking about it is that the probation officers are the enemy. They're saying if they had more of them, there would be more humane treatment of these children. What? How do you well, respond yeah, to that? I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, and I come from the perspective. My mother, uh, Margie Marks, was an educator uh, for 15 years. My father served in the Los Angeles Police Department for over 30 years. And so I understand um, the perspective that um, many black folks have, black and brown folks have, that, that justice, accountability equals police. But we know that that's not true. Cornel West says that justice, uh, is, that love is what justice looks like in public, right? So the same way, Dominique, that you would want accountability for your own, for, uh, uh, your, your own son or your own child that, uh, and that you love at home is what should inform our public policy. But that's not the case right now. Um, okay. That, but that still doesn't address the question, which is, you know, we hear uh, from the Board of Supervisors that – not just from the Board of Supervisors, from probation, which has had a revolving door of leadership, that one of the problems is staffing. They just don't have enough probation officers to run those um, jails, those youth jails, uh, humanely, and that folks are calling out, they're not coming to work. Um, And it sounds like you don't think that's the problem at all. Well, I, I think that, again, it's it's around how some of this money is being spent. They sent $3 billion just on the lawsuits from all of that abuse and misconduct. It's like, again, it doesn't take – if we can stretch um, to hear their excuses, I don't see you know why there's such a failure to stretch to see that um, community-based, decentralized um, care and funding for community-based organizations who are already doing this work to be able to step up to the plate and serve young people and use some of you know all these empty houses around here to provide programs um, to be able to support. And again, yesterday what we called for was to free the 50 girls and gender expansive youth. Okay, right? we're, we're going to touch um, on, yes, on what happened yesterday when we come forward. Uh, youth Justice Coalition taking action at the L.A. County Board of Supervisors meeting. We'll have the details for you next on KBLA Talk 1580. Say the quiet part out loud. loud. KBLA Talk 1580. We asked seniors how to prevent Medicare scams. My best advice if you get a phone call, do not talk to the person. These people are well trained. Don't talk to them. They don't know me. They're just trying to scam me. Don't be fooled. Hang up. Just hang up. Never give out your Medicare number. They're going to get your number to put in a false claim. If I get a call from someone, I don't pick up the phone. And should I pick up the phone and they ask for information, then I hang up. How do you detect Medicare fraud? Just like I check my credit card statements, I check my Medicare statements monthly. Scammers can get a hold of your number, order medical devices through your account, and you're not even going to know about it if you don't look at your statement. Check your statement every month. If you get your statement and you see something that you know you did not have done, you report it. Call your senior Medicare patrol. To report Medicare fraud, call the senior Medicare patrol at 855-613-7080. 
We used to argue about whose turn it was to clean the gutters. But then I had Leaf Filter gutter protection installed. Wait, I told you Leaf Filter had free inspections and estimates and a lifetime guarantee. Meaning we never have to argue about whose turn it is to clean the gutters again. But I visited LeafFilter.com slash Beacon first. No, I did. It doesn't matter who. Visit LeafFilter.com slash Beacon to schedule your free gutter inspection and get up to 30% off today. See representative for warranty details. Promotion is 20% off plus a 10% senior or military discount. One discount per household. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. Find a righteous range, and don't be afraid to say what you see. For KBLA Talk 1580. Uh, yes, man, time flies when you are on the radio, and um, so much important uh, and just really interesting conversation with Justin Marks, who's a co-executive director of the Youth Justice Coalition and Jazara Holiday, who is an organizer with that same organization and also a garden teacher there. So um, talk about the action that took place on yesterday. Um, Justin, are you the best person to break that down? Or um, Jazara, is that you? Whoever wants to take it. Go ahead, Jazara. <laughs> so, yes. Go first and I can okay, go first. Go first. Okay. So yesterday's action was about, number one, freeing the 50 girls and gender expensive youth. But it was also because we've been, we've been to BOS, I mean, not uh, youth, Board of Supervisors. We've been to Board of Supervisors, and we give our speeches every time. We sit, we sit the hours, we do the one minute, right? We've been to Sacramento, right? Again, we sit the hours, we give our public comment, right? We try to do it in, you know, the most, you know, respectable, suitable way like everybody else. We have done this process for years. I've now been an organizer for what three, four years now. I've been doing I've been doing this process for four years. Just in way longer. My team members way longer, right? And still these facilities are still being run under these harsh conditions. There's still children like Brian Diaz dying. There were two more children that had overdosed off fentanyl after Brian Diaz. Like Justin said, it has been out of compliance for over 210 days. Um, $416 million spent per year to incarcerate kids when it could be spent on places like YJC that actually empower the youth, that have programs for the youth, education for the youth, political education for the youth, jobs. With all these resources that can be put, all the money that they have can be put into resources that are could bet will stop 90%. I bet a good 90% of children from going to jail. Like I said, I grew up on the east side. I grew up in survival mode, and that's what a lot of our kids are going through to this day. So what happened yesterday? You're right. What happened yesterday? Yesterday we had an action um, to shed light on the indecency and the noncompliance. Um, BOS has the power to free those kids. They've done it before. They've declared a state of emergency during COVID to get folks released. They can do it again. There's children dying. There's an urgency. It is a state of emergency. There's over 3,000 reports of sexual assault 
they could do something if they really wanted to. Like I said, so that's what yesterday was about. Yesterday was about being hurt. Yesterday was about trying to free those kids. All right. Uh, and you want to go a little bit more into the details, uh, Justin, of what actually occurred and what you're calling for and why sure. these 50, uh, these 50 um, children in particular. Right. And so, um, so yesterday at the board of supervisors um, where they have their, their weekly meeting, um, they honored, they started by honoring Dolores Huerta, right. Um, Along, a um, you know, a, a giant in, in organizing. Um, there was a full audience uh, filled with community members coming to speak around different things um, around arts, around um uh, you know, um, recognizing Dolores Huerta Day, recognizing the, Amer the, the Armenian genocide. Um, and what was also um, on the agenda was uh, another kind of extension for probation to be able to continue uh, this. And so there were young people who had been previously incarcerated, members from the Young Women's Freedom Center, Students Deserve, um, the Arts for Healing Justice Network, who stood up and said, no more, listen to us. We have something to say. We need to disrupt business as usual. And we need to highlight the fact that Brian Diaz was killed inside these facilities, um, which had been found out of compliance for over 200 days and to push for the freeing of these 50 girls and gender expansive youth, who um, again is a, what, what we see as a low hanging fruit. There are not uh, what they call 707 um, 3B offenses, where they're high level um, crimes, but you, again, you have young people and girls and gender expensive youth who have been locked in these facilities um, and could be released now, right? Like um, having an alternative, like safe and secure healing centers to create spaces for youth to, to receive trauma responsive services in a small residential home like center. Um, closer to their families is that vision instead of having these youth prisons and jails that continue to traumatize and increase violence um, and crime. They don't, they don't work. They don't work. L.A. County has the lowest crime rates um, in history, but we keep, sending the, we keep seeing the highest amount in spending on these facilities that don't work. And that was the message that we were communicating yesterday to Holly Mitchell, to Lindsay Horvath, and to the rest of the board. Yeah, um, the L.A. County Board of Supervisors, you know, very powerful. It's true. What ended up happening? Uh, it, and so um, we shut that meeting down. Yesterday was an it was an expression of people power. Um, they had the sheriffs uh, move in to uh, try to intimidate um, the young girls and 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 uh, people of color who were there who were trying to speak out. Um, they went behind. They they hid for almost. Um, two hours um, behind the wall, and um, what happened outside was essentially an ad hoc town hall where, um, again, I mentioned Khalid Browder's brother, who was there, was speaking, who um, Adrena Rochelle was, was there, who Jasara Holiday um, and other young women from um, the Young Women's Freedom Center um, stood up and spoke and spoke their truth to this large community that hadn't didn't know what was going to happen that day but stayed and participated in this conversation um and agreed and called for the board of supervisors to come outside and to give a commitment to ending um the incarceration of our youth and to free these 50 girls and as jazara said to declare a state of emergency which they have done in recent history but we didn't get a commitment from the board of supervisors to that and so we know that there's still more work to do um, but they definitely have a plan and a path forward through the Youth Justice Reimagined. You can look up Youth Justice Reimagined report and see that there's a 75-page document that breaks it down, makes it plain and simple for, um, you know, and answers some of your questions around, well, if not secure youth track facilities for, for folks who are violent, then what then what will we have? And, and so this breaks it down. I, I guide folks to um, early on in that report to look at a breakdown of all the options and what folks have been pushing for for now over two decades. Um, real quick, we're going to go to Randy from Watts. Uh, Randy, sorry to um, put you right at the end, but I wanted to make sure they got a chance to talk about yesterday's action at the L.A. County Board of Supervisors. Go ahead, Randy. You know, this is so depressing. 
Dominique and I speak about these problems all the time on the radio in reference to these things that are not happening in Los Angeles. How much money has Karen Bass spent on trying to build houses for homeless? How many billions did we give to Ukraine? I mean, we're talking about. I mean, but you're all our- over the place because Karen Bass is city budget. She's been mayor, what, a little over a year. Uh, Ukraine is federal budget. And we're talking right now about the county, Randy, which is what is over the, you know, the probation hey, department, you know, which handles juvenile justice. You know, you know me and you know what we would do. And you know what you, you know, what Dr. King did back in the day when we, when we did those marches and they locked us up. You guys will have to go back to jail and just fill the jails up. Okay, they have. They gave you a speech, and you guys got in your car and drove off. All right. You um, guys are gonna have, now you got to put in blood on this one, man, because it's upsetting me. And this is I'm not the guy that you want to upset. Justin, thank you, Dominique. You guys have a good day. Yeah, I want to let Justin and, and Jazara respond um, to what Randy said. Jazara, you want to go first? Yeah, we're right at the top of the hour, so just jump in. Um, I would just I just want to express the fact that I am what reinvestment looks like. Like I said, I was in these girls' shoes, um, sixteen, seventeen years old, two felonies, not knowing what life was gonna look like for me after I made my mistake. But with Y J C and being given a second chance, I have not been incarcerated since twenty nineteen. I am now twenty one years old. I am a very educated young woman, and my life has been on a good road. And that's really thanks to YJC and the reinvestment into my life. Mm. When you just give up on these young people after one mistake, of course they're going to try to figure it out themselves. That's why we have in and outers. We have, that's why we have that. People have given up. And at the end of the day, we still are kids. I'm 21. I am still a kid. Mm. All I right, am we, we, I am still learning. we're up against the clock. This is so powerful. I uh, hopefully you guys will come back and we can continue the conversation. Uh, you got like t- ten seconds, Justin. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would just encourage people to um, to find out more. Look at Youth Justice LA online. Look at the Los Angeles Youth Uprising uh, Coalition online, um, and to support data-driven and transparent funding mechanisms to direct resources to community-based services that help you thrive and reduce justice system involvement. Thank you so much, Dominique. All right, th- we'll have to continue this conversation. I appreciate you guys waking up so early to speak with us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Got news, traffic, and sports, and then it's Wealth Building Wednesday only on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Moore.